let's look ahead now, going down in the pipeline a little further. Uh, I warned you there was a drug I might have trouble pronouncing, and here it comes. It's bezlotoximab. That's a, a biologic. Um, anybody familiar with that? It is a passive um, antibody approach to um, directing antibody at toxin uh, for C. diff, and it happens to target just the toxin B, uh, and it's bezlotoximab, but I think it's quickly going to go by the name Bezlo because no one can <laughs> pronounce that, including me. Uh, and its mechanism of action is that it is um, able to bind toxin, although it's given intravenously, so this is an infusion, uh, but in the circulation, the antibody can cross over th through the damaged mucosa of the colon and then locate the toxin in the lumen and bind to it and prevent the symptoms of disease. It does not do anything to the organism, nor does it do anything to the microbiota, but it allows them both uh, the C. diff to eventually go away and the microbiome to recover. And its um, indication for use is to prevent recurrence. That's, that's its sole indication. And you don't give it, it acutely, you give it to prevent recurrence. Yeah, you, you have a patient who's being treated for C. diff with antibiotics, uh, and you add this intravenous infusion to reduce the risk that the patient will have a recurrence. So it's, if I understand you correctly, it's, it's an antitoxin. That's correct, exactly. It's straightforward antitoxin. That's it. And nobody thought of this before because? Oh, it's, it's been <laughs> well, thought of before. <laughs> yeah, people, you know, some people have used intravenous immunoglobulin. There, Does that work? There are anti-C. Anti difficile toxin antibodies um, in, in IVIG, so, so this is just you know, a monoclonal antibody, so a very high concentration of antibodies against toxin B. The, dif the difference is that yeah. this one works. <laughs> so we've and, had and lots of tries in the past. Right, right, this one works, and, 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 and at the beginning, uh, actually there was a toxin against, uh, there was an antibody against toxin A in the mixture, and it was proven to not work, even though it was a targeted uh, antibody. So, but this one does work, and this one will likely be used uh, in patients. Uh, it's hard uh, to imagine that everyone with CDF will get this infusion, also because many as we heard, many of the uh, patients who are diagnosed with CDF actually are diagnosed in the community. Uh, uh, but, 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 uh, but again, there are populations that are at risk for recurrence. And as we mentioned, the most well-defined population is, are those who already had CDF in the past. And so this will likely be used in people who had CDF in the past, maybe one episode of CDF and have another risk factor such as age or having, it, uh, uh, having it's cancer. It's been shown to work uh, just as well in high-risk patients. Uh, over the age of 65, uh, the epidemic strain, 027, immunocompromised, uh, and even combinations of those high-risk uh, factors. And I think those are going to be the most likely targeted patients okay. for If this. it were cheap, would you not give it to everybody? Of oh, course, yeah, I we're think not we can say that about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. but, but would it? Would it not, well, we don't would, know. We don't know what pricing will be. The it's not expected want, no, to be marketed cost. until without until cost. Next year. Would it not make sense to have something there that could bind to the toxin, maybe shorten the natural history of the disease episode, and hang around and prevent recurrence in everybody? It will reduce recurrence, not completely. You know, I don't want to be misleading anyone in thinking that this will end recurrences because it reduces them from about 27 percent uh, in the placebo group down to 17 percent. Well, that's, so that's significant. That's oh, it's a, definitely a significant reduction. Um, so there still will be people having recurrences, uh, and, and of course, uh, the less expensive it were, the more it would be used, undoubtedly. But this is also going to be a, a drug, presumably, that has a fairly high cost of goods okay. and development. But costs, if the so. posit in this drug, or in this disease, is that you can get permanent injury to the colon and persistent diarrhea going forward, and presumably, and against an assumption, that at least part of this permanent damage is due to chronic exposure to the toxin, taking the toxin away, binding it, keeping it away from the gut, can't be bad. You might take his 25% down a lot. So Absolutely. Actually, one thing to keep in mind uh, with, you know, the discussion of just giving it to everyone, you know, it remains to be seen if it was just a statistical anomaly because the numbers were very small, but it did appear that, that there may have been an increased risk of adverse events amongst people with congestive heart failure who received the drug. So, so, there's, there, so probably 
that's maybe one population to be a little more cautious with. Okay. If it's someone who's had three, four, five episodes of C. diff, then it's, the risk benefit is probably there. Okay. Um, well, that makes sense that like IVIG, which also can cause some volume uh, volume shifts, that it might cause a little bit of yeah. that. Yeah. So watch this so, space. So it remains to be seen, yeah. So once okay. it gets used a little more in clinical practice and, and, and we have some more experience. Okay. I don't want to leave this whole topic.